Now, this section can literally be a whole book. None of this stuff is new. None of this is groundbreaking. Oh my goodness, what is this brand new thing that you were talking about? But this section is all about money beliefs. We have already spoken about how the emotions create these beliefs and these stories within our body based on the experiences that we have. And we hold on to them and believe them to be true. Sometimes we don't even know why or how until we start looking at them. But once we start opening up that can of worms and once we start creating things and doing new things and trying to manifest new things into our lives, we will start to notice where these beliefs are. And because this whole video series and book is all about money, we are just doing money beliefs in here. Of course, we have beliefs on every single topic possible, but this section, we're just going to have a little look at money beliefs. So this is just going to be my version of money beliefs and some that you may be holding on to as well so that you can start opening up your own Pandora's box. But I'm pretty sure if you're here, you probably already have. So none of this information is going to be new. It's always good to listen to see if you've got anything new to hear or anything that you might need to relook at because we know sometimes these ideas, these thoughts, these beliefs that we think that we have uh, mastered sometimes come back. So what is a money belief? Well, first of all, what is a belief? A belief is something that we continue to think to be true. And it's held together in our mind by story and energetically within our physical body. What's a money belief? That's just a belief that is attached to money. And where do these money beliefs come from? Everywhere. A lot of my money beliefs came from my parents. Uh, Mine were a little bit different to a lot of other people's. We all have different money beliefs and they can be different for everyone. So when I talk about common money beliefs, they may not be common for you. They may not be ones that even are on your radar. They may not be even things that you've ever thought about, but they could be something that have some sort of resonance within you and you won't know until someone else talks about it. Because I didn't know I had money beliefs and still I started working on trying to manifest money. It's, oh, hang on, why am I holding on to this? Because we all hold beliefs. And I'll show you a, a super easy example that I use all the time to show you about beliefs. And that's the old, is the earth round or flat? And immediately you will have an answer to that. And you could say it's round, you could say it's flat, you can say it's a weird shape, you could say it changes all the time. You are already going to have an answer to that. And that is going to be based on whatever knowledge you have, whatever research, if you have even done any, and what beliefs you are currently holding. And none of that is right or wrong. It's just going to be what you believe. And we are going to hold on to that across every single different topic, idea, thought, whatever it is, we are going to hold that across so many other different things. The reason why I talk about that though is, is because it's something that, well, for most people, it's not going to make much of a difference to their daily life. Unless you're someone who teaches about the whole world and what it looks like, it's not going to affect your daily life. If I said to you that I could give you proof of an alternative to what you believe, would you still believe in what you believe and why? Because you think about it. I grew up, obviously, learning that the earth was round. But then you start watching videos where people are talking about the earth is flat. You start watching videos of people talking about how it's shaped weirdly or people talking about how it is changing. I can literally show you people telling you all those different things, which means that there's no 100% truth in it. Like I say, with anything, there is nothing that is 100% every single person in this world is going to believe. Again, which means we can create our own belief. We can create our own story. And so with 
is the earth round or flat? It's like, well, what do you believe? I don't need to believe in anything because it doesn't affect me, my life, what I'm doing, how I'm feeling. It has no bearing. So I don't need to hold an opinion or a belief. Instead, I just get to sit in the openness of hearing these different ideas and hearing these different viewpoints and these different opinions and I can just sit and absorb. I don't need to give it meaning because remember, we're talking about doing something in order to get something, feeling something in order to receive something. When we sit in that openness, it's a lot more fun and a lot more open to new things because when we when we close off from just one idea when we sit in just one belief it doesn't matter you can still hold your own beliefs you can still believe that this is this and that is that but you still need to have some sort of awareness that there are other ideas other beliefs other possibilities out there even if they're not yours even if someone said to me that I believe that that we are all inside a video game. Cool. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't matter whether I believe that or not. If they believe that or not, it has no bearing on me. But if I close my mind off and I went, no, that is wrong, there is no way in the world that that is possible. All that's doing is, is putting resistance into my energetic field. It's closing me off from open possibilities. That's one of the biggest things I've learned so far with these beliefs is you can still have your own beliefs. You can still have your own truths. You can still follow whatever routine, rules, patterns, structure, ideas, beliefs, whatever it is. You can follow whatever it is for you. I just think we need to also be open to the possibility and understanding that other people have their own, other people have different viewpoints. And there's an example that I've given, I swear I've done this so many times across my socials, but it's like if everyone went outside right now into their backyard and looked up, what are they going to see? Everyone's going to see something totally different because we're all in different time zones. We're all in different parts of the day. It could be daytime, nighttime, sunny, rainy, cloudy, whatever it is. But if everyone went outside and said and described what they were seeing, what they were experiencing in that moment, who would be right and who would be wrong. We would all be right, but we all have different opinions. We're all saying something different. And that's exactly the whole approach that I believe that we should have in this existence is to understand that every single person has this different viewpoint, that everyone is seeing things from a different place, a different location a different vibrational frequency different codes different desires different experiences emotions beliefs there's such an intricate web of the way in which we are all different in the way that we see things if we have that understanding that that is how it is for other people then it's just going to make our life so much easier it's so much harder i think to oppose what other people are thinking. Yes, it's great to believe in what you believe in to be true and to hold on to your own knowing, your own truth. But I don't think we need to force it down other people's throats. I don't think we get to decide that we are right and someone else is wrong. I think that we just need to be in that space that we can accept that we all have our own truths. We are, all have our own knowings and just be open to that. And you know what happens with that as well? Like you get to hear so many new stories and new ideas and new viewpoints that it's actually really quite fascinating. <laughs> and I love listening to people's uh, in-depth knowings and truths that they have across so many ideas. And I love absorbing it and bringing it in. And what I do, because we do storytelling and fantasy and desires, I get to pull out the pieces that I like and that I want to believe in and that I want to find or feel to be true for me in that moment. And I get to create my own story because if it doesn't affect my reality and where I'm at right now, and it's making me feel good, guess what? I'm going to take that on board. 
So in the book, I have listed some money beliefs. I've listed a bit of a story about them and what the old belief is and what the new belief could be. I'm going to put that PDF in here so you can have a look at them and see how they track for you. And it's funny in the book when I went over this section, because this was a heavy section of the original version of this book, that as I was reading and going through this, I was bored. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is so boring. So I actually wrote, and if you're reading the book, you'll see that anyway, that it says you can skip this whole part and go to the next chapter if you want, because this is boring the shit out of me. And it's not because it's boring information. It's just that I think because I did so much work on it, because it is so basic and something that was such a big part of things that I had to work through that now I just look at it and go, man, let's do it different. Let's create it different. Like I did not do all this stuff over the last few years just so we can get in the same space of doing the same thing. So if you want to skip it, if you've done money stories, I'm pretty sure if you're here reading my book or, or in this course, you have already done money shit, but it's there. You can read it, knock yourself out. I may do a video on it. I don't know because <laughs> It's just not something that I attach to as much in the way that it was created. Now we do a little bit different. I'll talk about that in the next video.